Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. A logical and a systematic approach to solving organic chemistry problems for CSAR net. In the module 9, we will be looking at organic reaction mechanisms involving addition reactions with electrophilic, nucleophilic or radical species. I am Professor Balaji, currently working at Jawaharlal Nehru University. This project is sponsored by DTH Swayamprabha MHRD New Delhi. So, in this module, what we are going to learn? We will be looking at organic reaction mechanisms involving addition reactions with electrophilic, nucleophilic or radical species. So, let us look at the first problem. So, here the first question, this appeared in June 2011. The addition of BH3 to the carbon-carbon double bond is, there are four options given. One, it is a anti-marconic of syn addition. The second option is anti-marconic of anti-addition. The third one is marconic of addition, but it is a syn one. And the last one is Marconic of anti addition. So, there are four options given for this problem. So, let us look at uh, how to solve the problem. So, before according to Marconic of rule, we do need to know what is the plus part and the minus part in that particular molecule which is going to add across the double bond. So, how do we know in the borane molecule? We have to look at the electronegativity of the atoms involved in this one. So, here when we look at BH3, the boron's electronegativity value is 2.0 and for hydrogen it is 2.1. So, we can say in borane, the negative part is basically the hydrogen atom. So, when we look at the borane, we can actually break that into H uh, dash BH2 like that, we can uh, break that molecule. So, in that case, the negative part of the addon term, because according to Marconica rule, the negative part of the addon term attaches itself to the most substituted carbon atom. So, here in this alkene, we have a R group that is present in one of the carbons and we have two hydrogen atoms in the other uh, carbon. So, that means this carbon is the most uh, substituted one because there is an R group attached to that. So, the negative part of the molecule that is the hydride ion adds to the most substituted carbon. So, and in this particular case, the addition happens from the same side. So, this is a syn addition and the negative part adds to the most substituted carbon. In other words, the hydride ion adds to the carbon bearing the alkyl group. So, the reaction is, as we know, this is the Marconic of addition and uh, this is a syn addition. That means, the BH2 unit and the hydride ion both add from the same side. So, that is how we can solve this problem. And let us move on to the next question. This question appeared in June 2012. So, here the reactive intermediate involved in the following reaction is, a reaction is given here and we have to identify what is the intermediate, whether a carbocation is involved in that reaction or a carbanion or a carbon radical or a arine intermediate. So, there are four different uh, intermediates may be involved, any one of the intermediate may be involved in this particular reaction. So, we have to find it out what is the intermediate involved in this reaction. Before we uh, move to the solution, we can look at uh, the reagent that is used in this reaction. There is uh, sodium hydro, uh, sodamide is uh, used in this particular reaction, NaNH2. So, this is a uh, strong base. So, that we can actually uh, keep in mind because that is very, very essential when we are going to solve this problem. And we also have a electronegative bromine atom present in the aromatic ring. So, let us look at uh, how the reaction will actually proceed. So, in the case of sodamide NaNH2, this is the base that is involved in this reaction. So, this amide anion which acts as a base abstract the hydrogen or the ortho hydrogen with respect to the bromine atom in this particular case. So, the abstraction of the proton by the amide anion is the first step. So, once the hydrogen is removed, 
then what happens is there is a shift of bond with the concomitant removal of the bromide anion. So, this is the first step. So, when this happens what we end up is we end up with the arine that is a benzene type intermediate is formed in this particular case and when the benzene is formed what happens is we have a hydrogen atom. So, benzene is basically electron rich and we have a lone pair on the nitrogen. So, the lone pair on the nitrogen attacks the benzene and with the concomitant uh, one of the uh, uh, pi bond abstracts the hydrogen atom. So, this leads to the cyclization and we end up with the intramolecular nucleophilic addition of the benzene actually takes place in this particular case. So, the intermediate involved in this particular reaction is a arine intermediate. So, let us move on to the next problem. So, this problem appeared in June 2016. So, here uh, the question is the major product formed in the following reaction sequence are. So, we have to find out what is the major product that is uh, formed in a reaction sequence because we have a step number 1 a base sodium hydroxide is uh, used in the presence of uh, an aldehyde. The second one is TaCl3 water uh, based reaction. So, there are two steps involved in this one. We have a nitro uh, derivative as the starting material, ethyl nitrate is the starting material or nitro ethane is the starting material. So, we have to identify what is the final product formed in this reaction. There are four options given in this particular case. So, let us look at how the reaction will proceed. So, earlier we have seen that uh, when we use a base and when we have the uh, nitroethane like molecule, so they behave like a acyl anion equivalent. So, that is what we are going to look at how the reaction actually proceeds. So, there is a hydrogen on this particular carbon. Um, so, that hydrogen is being abstracted by the base. So, we end up with a anion that is formed here. So, once we have an anion, so this will uh, attack the aldehyde unit that is uh, involved in that first step. So, this is the electrophilic carbon and we have a carb anion. So, we already know that uh, this addition will take place very effectively and this leads to the hydroxy derivative as shown here and uh, the nitro group is added. So, this is how the reaction actually proceeds. So, the acyl anion equivalent is basically this one which is added to the thing. And uh, what is the next step is basically the TaCl4, uh, uh, TaCl3 and the water based reaction that is nothing but the Neff reaction. This Neff reaction we have seen earlier also. So, what is the Neff reaction? We have a nitro alkane. The nitro alkane is uh, treated with the base and uh, that leads to the nitronate salt and that nitronate salt is uh, further uh, hydrolyzed to give the carbonyl compound and nitrous oxide. So, here what happens is this the nitro group is getting converted to the carbonyl unit. So, that is how the reaction actually takes place. So, in our case the final product is the acyloine product that is a hydroxy ketone alpha hydroxy ketone is our final product. So, let us move on to the next problem. So, this problem appeared in June 2012. So, here the nucleophilic attack on olefin under mild condition uh, the question is given is always facile that is the first option. Uh, the second option is is more facile than electrophilic attack on olefins. The third option is it is facile for electron rich olefins and the fourth option is it requires activation by coordination to metal. So, now one thing what we have to remember is when we say nucleophile, nucleophile is basically a electron rich species. It may be neutral or it may also be having a negative charge. In other words, nucleophile is always electron rich species. So, when it is an electron rich species, so what type of reaction it may undergo? Uh, it is always facile means uh, we do not know where the reaction actually is going to happen. So, this is a quite a difficult one to uh, consider as an answer because whether it is going to uh, attack a electrophile or it is going to add to some other uh, place we really do not know. So, this answer may not be the right uh, or the appropriate answer and here the second one we had given uh, electrophilic attack. So, that means it is more facile than the electrophilic attack. So, now when we have a double bond, a double bond is actually electron rich. So, when it is electron rich basically a electrophile can easily attack a electro, uh, electron rich place. 
but when we have a nucleophile which is either neutral or having more electron so we have electron rich double bond we have electron rich uh, nucleophile so they will repel each other so in other words a nucleophile cannot easily attack a double bond so that means it cannot be more facile than the electrophilic attack on olefin so this is actually exactly opposite of what is actually uh, going to happen so this is also rolled out and then is facile for electron rich olefin that means it is even worse case because if it is electron rich olefin then we have even plenty of uh, electron um, present that means the negative charge is there and the nucleophile being negative cannot attack very effectively so that means all the three options are actually not possible for this one so then we have to only look at the last one which is it requires activation by coordination metal so what does it mean by that so when an alkene coordinates with the metal especially the transition metals if you assume then they have plenty of d orbitals empty d orbitals are present in uh, various uh, transition uh, state uh, elements so that means these electrons that means the alkene will actually transfer it electron to the metal bond thereby making it electron deficient so the nucleophile can easily attack the alkene bond because the alkene will be having less electron density because some of or part of the electrons are transferred to the metals d orbital so basically what we can say is that, that there is a coordination between the metals d orbital and the electron rich alkene so the electron rich alkene now becomes electron uh, we cannot say it is uh, completely electron deficient but the electron density is reduced comparatively now the nucleophile which is having more electrons can easily attack the alkene so that is how for an alkene to undergo a reaction with the nucleophile we do need metal activation so this then we can assume that the correct answer is going to be the last one that means the nucleophilic attack on olefin actually requires a activation by coordination to the metal so this is the correct answer for this one let us move on to the next problem this appeared in june 2016 so the major product formed in the following reaction is we have a carbonyl compound given as a starting material bicyclic ketone and this reacts in the first step with the khmds this is nothing but a strong base and we also have a oxazidine is uh, given as the second uh, re uh, substrate that is undergoing reaction so we end up with the four different type of product that is the options given four different products are given as the final product in this reaction we have to find out what is the product that will be formed basically if you look at this reaction this is uh, the n sulfonyl oxazidines are basically used in davis oxazidine they are called as davis oxazidine they are actually used for oxidation reactions now let us look at how the reaction actually will proceed so we have a carbonyl compound khmds is basically the base which is used so this will abstract there are a couple of uh, acidic protons that are present here so in this particular case this one is actually uh, not easily accessible so that is the reason this hydrogen which is the acidic one because we have two alpha hydrogens which are acidic with respect uh, which are present to the carbonyl group so any one of the hydrogen can be abstracted by the base but this is a less hindered site and this is a hindered site so that's the reason the less hindered site uh, hydrogen is abstracted by the base so we end up with a anion so when we have an anion which is in uh, uh, adjacent to a carbonyl group it can uh, uh, remain like a enolate form so enolate form is nothing but we have a negative charge there is one hydrogen negative charge here and we have the double bond here so this basically the oxygen being electronegative in nature so this pulls the electron towards itself and we end up with a enolate derivative so this enolate derivative uh, is the one which will be formed in this particular case and for our convenience we are uh, treating this as a anion because uh, this helps us uh, uh, understand the reaction mechanism uh, in a much better way so the second thing is uh, this carbanion now attacks the oxaziridine ring so how uh, in what type of reaction it actually attacks is it's basically the sn2 type uh, addition so this attacks the oxygen and uh, that leads to the formation of the 
heminal intermediate because here this attack leads to the ring opening and the site of attack actually happens from the less hindered site because here we have a bulky group on this nitrogen here also we have a bulky phenyl ring so that means these two sites cannot be attacked and we can assume that that oxygen is very similar to the carbon so the nucleophile attacks this particular atom that is how the ring opening takes place and we end up with the intermediate hemiaminal as given here see this is basically a highly reactive species and uh, here the metal is actually coordinated with the negative charge on nitrogen so this species now undergoes basically hydrolysis so when we hydrolyze this bond what happens is the hydrolysis happens here and we end up with the hydroxy compound so this reaction leads to the acyloin that means uh, alpha hydroxy ketone is the one that is formed in this particular reaction and uh, this oxidation of enolate so this is the enolate we were talking about so the oxidation of the enolate uh, by the oxaziridine is called as davis oxidation so because this uh, reaction was uh, identified by uh, franklin davis so this reaction is named after this particular scientist let us move on to the next problem so this problem appeared in june 2011 uh, examination the question is the suitable reagent for the following conversion is here what the change happens is basically an alkene is converted into a epoxide so this is the reaction actually happening so there are four different reagents given the first one is mcpba that is metachloroperoxybenzoic acid the second one is hydrogen peroxide in the presence of acetic acid the third one is tertiary butyl hydroperoxide in the presence of hydrochloric acid and the last one is nothing but a hydrogen peroxide in the presence of sodium hydroxide so if you look at uh, the four different condition the mcpba there are no other additional reagents so we can assume that this may be uh, close to a neutral condition the second and the third option b and c are happening in the presence of a uh, acid so h plus is present in this particular uh, reaction conditions and in the last one we have a uh, anion or a base that is present in that that is sodium hydroxide is the base which is used so we have acidic mechanism we have neutral uh, mechanism and also we have a, a basic one so there are three different types of uh, reaction conditions are involved so we have to find it out what is the exact thing required for this particular reaction so let us look at the reaction the first step is if we are going to use a base what will happen is the hydrogen peroxide in the presence of a base is converted into a peroxide anion if it is happening in the presence of uh, acidic conditions what will happen is basically the protonation of the carbonyl compound is actually going to happen so the mechanism is going to be happening on the uh, ketone rather than the reagent so if we have a acidic condition the protonation of this particular carbonyl carbon carbon happens that is the first step this is a alpha beta unsaturated system so we have a alpha beta unsaturated system here so the negative electron actually pulls the pi bonded electron towards itself so making this particular carbon more electrophilic in nature so we can assume that or we can uh, uh, consider that this particular carbon becomes more electrophilic in nature because of the presence of the carbonyl group so this alpha beta unsaturated system undergoes uh, electron pull by the electronegative oxygen so of course when this becomes a electron uh, rich uh, or the electron deficient uh, carbon that is electrophilic one we have a methyl group which is having a plus i effect so this can actually donate some electron to that to stabilize that so this is one thing we have to keep in mind uh, literally speaking this carbon is more electrophilic in nature and uh, this is how the electron shift basically takes place now we have a negatively charged the nucleophile that is the peroxide anion is there so this is having negative charge this is going to have a delta plus charge uh, that is partial positive charge so this reaction becomes very facile because the negative charge negative and the positive uh, can combine very effectively so we end up with the 
peroxide anion adding to this particular carbon atom and during the charge reversal step what happens is the hydroxide ion is lost. So, this negative charge from the oxygen comes between the carbon oxygen bond and this pi bond uh, shifts or attacks this oxygen with the concomitant loss of the hydroxide unit. So, when this attacks what happens is basically this double bond from this particular carbon is the one which attacks this oxygen. So, we end up with a epoxide ring formed as shown here. So, for this reaction to occur what we need is a negatively charged or the nucleophilic uh, peroxide anion and the nucleophilic peroxide anion can be generated only by the uh, base uh, hydroxide anion. So, that means what we can say is this reaction is possible only with the reagent that is a sodium hydroxide. So, sodium hydroxide is the reagent that is required for this particular reaction. Any acidic conditions basically will only protonize the carbonyl carbon and this reaction will not proceed. So, let us move on to the next problem. So, this problem appeared in June 2013. So, which of the following statement is true for the following transformation. So, here again if you look at very carefully this is also a very similar reaction what we have seen uh, just now. So, there is a alpha beta unsaturated system and here the next question what we are going to address is the stereochemistry of the product that is formed. So, here the suitable reagent for MCPBA for this transformation and B is the major product. So, that is option number 1. And the suitable reagent is MCPBA with uh, A as the major product. So, that is B and uh, the suitable reagent is hydrogen peroxide and sodium hydroxide and B is the major product and the last option is the suitable reagent is hydrogen peroxide, sodium hydroxide and A is the major product. So, we have four different options and we already know from the previous one this MCPBA combination is not there because this is an alpha beta unsaturated system which requires a nucleophilic or a basic condition for that reaction to occur. So, our reaction is going to be between uh, C or D. The only thing what we have to know is how the attack actually takes place whether it is from the bottom side attack or the top side attack and which leads to the epoxide at the top or the bottom. So, that is what we have to actually uh, identify. So, we can proceed little bit further uh, similar to the previous one we can say that uh, this reaction actually is involved in the basic condition sodium hydroxide and hydrogen peroxide condition is the one which is required, but we are going to look at the stereochemistry of the reaction. So, when we look at the stereochemistry uh, our uh, alpha beta unsaturated system can be written as shown here. So, we have a planar one what we can say is uh, uh, all the four ca carbons are in the same plane we can draw like that structure and in this particular case the hydrox uh, the peroxide anion has to attack this particular double bond. So, from where it will attack that is the only thing we have to see in the top attack there is no hydrogen which is preventing from the attack of uh, the peroxide anion from the top whereas when we look at the bottom side there is a hydrogen atom present on this particular carbon. So, there is a steric hindrance of this peroxide anion attacking from the bottom side. So, in other words what we can say is the bottom side attack is not possible and only the top side attack can happen. So, in other words when the top side attack happens the epoxide that oxygen is going to be at the top. So, our product is actually going to be formed with the stereochemistry as shown here. So, this is how we can find out for this alpha beta unsaturated system the basic condition is the only thing required for the epoxide formation and since uh, the attack of the peroxide can happen from either top or bottom. So, here because of the hydrogen's presence at the bottom the bottom side attack is not possible. So, only the top side attack leads to the final product as shown here. Let us move on to the next problem. So, this problem appeared in December 2019. So, in the following uh, reaction sequence the major product P and Q are. So, here we have a nitro derivative and we also have the oxalate uh, compound. So, there are two reactants present here and the first step is a reaction with the, a base sodium methoxide is a strong base. So, the first step is the reaction with the base and the second reaction is zinc and acetic acid basically this is a reduction condition. So, the first one is a base 
catalyzed or base uh, involved reaction and the second one is the reduction using zinc and acetic acid. So, that leads to what are all four different combinations are here. In the first one, it is simply the condensation reaction between the oxalate and the corresponding uh, aryl derivative and the second step is basically a cyclist derivative is formed that is what uh, a lactam unit is formed that is shown here. And the second one, we have a, a different unit. Uh, in this uh, first case, the ethyl acid, the diethyl oxalates, one of the OET group, uh, that CO2 ET group is completely lost. So, we only have only one carbonyl unit that is present. And in the second one, we have two carbonyl unit present from the oxaloacetate, uh, uh, ethyl oxalate. And in the third one, what we have is, we have only the ester unit that is present and this is nothing but the indole derivative and uh, the fourth one is basically only one of the carbonyl uh, group is present and the ester is also present. So, OET is last. So, these are all the different uh, products combinations that are possible. Let us look at what are the product that is possible in this particular reaction. So, let us look at the reaction as we clearly know the uh, sodium ethoxide is the base that is involved in this reaction. So, the base abstracts a proton from this methyl group and that leads to the formation of a carbanion. So, this is the first step that is formed and once the carbanion is formed, we already know what can happen is the carbanion can actually attack the electrophilic carbon here on the ethyl oxalate unit and with the oxygen taking the pi electrons. So, what we have is a tetrahedral intermediate that will be formed in this particular reaction. So, this nucleophilic attack of the carbanion on the ethyl oxalate leads to the tetrahedral intermediate and once the tetrahedral intermediate is formed, the next step is going to be the charge reversal of the negative charge. So, the oxygen's negative charge is uh, coming between the carbon oxygen bond with the concomitant loss of the OET unit. So, the OET is lost as the ethoxide anion that leads to the keto ester as shown here. So, this is the first step uh, that is happening. So, this is our intermediate P that will be formed in this particular reaction. So, what is the next step? Once the intermediate P is formed, the next step is basically the reduction using zinc and acetic acid. So, the nitro group is reduced to the amino group. So, once we have a electron rich nitrogen here, we have a electrophilic carbon here. So, obviously, you know what is actually going to happen. So, the next step is basically the attack of this lone pair of electron on the nitrogen to the electrophilic carbon with the double bond shifting towards the more electronegative oxygen. So, this is how we again end up with the tetrahedral intermediate as shown here we have a positive charge on this nitrogen because the nitrogen had actually given out its uh, lone pair of electrons. So, uh, final thing required is like uh, we have to just uh, neutralize the charges by pushing the electrons here and there. So, how do we do that is very simple. So, this oxygen is having a, a negative charge. So, this hydrogen comes and this is lost that oxide uh, leaves as a water molecule basically that is how this will uh, leave uh, this will go as a HOH minus and then one more proton will be taken. So, this will here is a second hydrogen which will go to this oxygen. So, we end up with the water molecule that is being lost and when this hydrogen on the nitrogen is shifted the bonds are uh, taken by the nitrogen atom. So, the charge on nitrogen is neutralized. So, we end up with the water molecule loss of water molecule leads to the final product as shown here. So, there are two uh, multiple steps are shown in a single step here. Uh, transfer of electrons are happening and the transfer of hydrogen atom also happens. One hydrogen from here, second hydrogen from here, one oxygen from here. So, all the three combine together to uh, be lost as a water molecule and uh, then what happens is like uh, this nitrogen also gets the its charge is neutralized by the loss of this hydrogen atom because this bond is now shifted towards the nitrogen. So, we end up with the indole derivative as shown here. So, this is the intermediate P and this is the intermediate Q. 
So that is how P and Q are formed in this particular case.